That will mainly be for BSK Best Start for Kids um, grant recipients that are involved with the county reporting. If that is relevant to you, please feel free uh, to stay the last 10 minutes, starting at 2.20. Thanks, Kim. Our objectives for this webinar are um, facilitators, affiliates, families, and communities will receive support that's needed. Um, we want to keep everyone up to date and stay informed. Um, learn from this evolving COVID-19 situation together and from one another, including impacts on KPL and communities that, are, um, that we serve and to focus on our community strength. Um, Kim? So yeah. Um, so we just have one COVID update that is a little bit more local specific, but I think it's just a good point to talk about in general. So for all of you in Washington State who live or work in King County or know someone that does, King County has now committed $2.2 million to provide childcare for free for essential workers who live or work in the county. And for a description, a very detailed description of what qualifies as an essential worker, you can click on the link here to um, see what that is. The funding for this will pay for a slot of childcare um, across the county through at least June. And so we really need the help of you all to get this word out there so that people who can benefit from this resource can use it. To apply for this funding, um, people can call the Child Care Aware of Washington Family Center at the phone number on this slide, and an intake will have to be done. The intake specialists are Spanish speaking and English speaking, but the intake can be done in any language um, free of charge. They have interpreters that they can use. Um, also, if you or someone else that you know of um, would want to apply to this, to expedite the process, you can send documentation to the subsidy at childcare.org email address. So again, this is mainly specific to Washington State and King County. If you're not in Washington State, but you're in a different state, I strongly encourage you to look at what kind of childcare supports your area is providing, because that may be of interest to some of your KPL participants who may be needing that. Does anyone have questions on this update? There was a question just asking if this is strictly for King County. Yes, this, this specifically, this 2.2 million is strictly for King County for those who live or work in King County. Um, it is, I'm not sure about what other counties in the state are doing but I would encourage you if you're in a different county in Washington state to look into what your county may be doing um, for child care supports. And the reason why we're focusing on this is because um, child care resources, the hub of Kaleidoscope Playland is located in King County and this information just came through to us that we are sharing it. But if we know of any others, we will definitely let you know. There's a couple questions, Kim. Um, how would yeah. we find this in our county? Some of them find this information in their specific county. How could they find it? Mm. Yeah, I, that's a good question. I, Child Care Aware is an umbrella org that covers all of Washington State, including all the counties. So I would imagine that they would post it on their website. Um, uh, we can look into that and let you know. Yeah. I think that Child Care Aware Washington website would be a starting point to look at because they cover all the counties. She does say that they, they did say that we, um, that they have Child Care Aware. Oh, okay. Um, there's another question. Do we know if there is a need for caregivers? Hmm. Mm. Care for um, children specifically or caregivers in general? Like family needing caregivers during this time for any age? Yeah, I'm not sure. Can you elaborate, Brooke? Mm. 
Um, we might have to come back to that one. Okay. Yeah, I if it if that question is related to a need for caregivers, for example, older children or older adults, so that first responders or essential workers can go to work. I'm not aware of that need, um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't one. And if there is, I don't have a resource um, in hand right now to connect uh, people with, but that is something that we can look into and provide you next time or add to our resource list as well. Um, she did say, um, does childcare aware need caregivers to pair with families who apply for this? Okay, I see. Um, I think this funding is specifically for licensed care, like family child care settings and child care uh, centers. And so I don't think they're necessarily pairing families to a family friend and neighbor caregiver, for example. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers the question. If not, um, please, please let us know. Do you have any more questions, Nicole? Okay. I don't. So, Zena, this is your slide. Okay. Um, so, we've mentioned that we wanted to track attendance for the virtual groups that are running during this time. So, here is a sample of the Serving Monkey link that will be provided for you to fill out. And it's pretty straightforward, um, super simple. Um, you'll just fill out the month of the attendance, organi your organization, and person of contact, which would be whoever is responsible for filling out the attendance report, and also putting down the facilitator's name, the amount of participants, so like an estimated amount and um, any comments that you want to put of your group. So that would be sent out through an email sometime next week. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here to always support you. You can always send an email out to the KPL email. And yeah, just let me know. If you Thank have you. any questions about it now, you can also put in the chat box or the Q&A box. And I to that for you. Thanks, Dana. Yep. All right. We have some questions for you all. Oh, it looks like there's a question. I'm going to check just in case it's for you. Um, will you send this link every month? Yes. It will be sent out towards the end of each Thank you. Um, I have a question. I am on the phone and I would like to do it with the computer so I can see. How do I switch that? For Zoom to go to your computer? Yeah. You can go, you can find the link that was sent and just click on it and it will take uh, you. are breaking. I'm sorry? Hello? Yeah, um, you were breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I got them? it. Yeah, this is Sucheta. I just wanted to join in via, sure. via computer and I'm not able to, I'm on the phone. Um, did you click on the link that was sent, um, the invitation link that was sent out? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying that. I can do it from my phone, but I couldn't do it from my computer. Can you tell me what it says when you, um, when you try and get in through your computer? Um, I did everything. It says confirm email address and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just saying in a meeting in is resume like mm. it's going it's on right now. But okay, that's okay. Please continue. That's okay. okay. I no, I think that's really good to know um, for us to know Suchata because I'm wondering if um, 
once you are in the room, uh, like after a certain time, maybe other people can't join. That's something that Kim and I need to look into. I would, I would um, end the, your access to the Zoom via phone and then just try clicking on it to start the Zoom via the yeah. video. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Thank you. That's a good idea. Thanks, Kim. Okay, so um, we're going to talk a little bit about virtual KPL. Um, and we're curious what platforms you all are using to offer live KPL groups um, in real time. Um, does anyone, is anyone currently doing that or um, thinking about using specific platforms? Um, if you're able to, you can certainly unmute yourselves. I just wasn't sure if we, if you all had access. Um, or raise your hand for us to unmute you. So Nicole, we have um, Bailey says Child Strive uses Zoom. Um, Brooke uses Zoom. Okay. Zoom. Su Wu uses Zoom. Awesome. Anyone else? Anyone using um, like Facebook or YouTube? Hi there, this is Helen from CISC. So we're currently um, hi, recording our videos um, onto Facebook and uh, YouTube. Thank you. Yes. Hi, this is Kim in Spokane and I'm currently in the process of figuring out how to use Facebook to promote videos. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We have Haley, she put in the chat box that she streams live to Facebook using Zoom. Awesome. And Tim uses Zoom calls on Friday. Facebook live. Thank you, Zainab. So here's just some examples on Facebook live stream. Um, I just forgot until just now that you can use Zoom to stream um, on Facebook Live and YouTube. Um, Skype, um, I'm trying to think if there is anything else. Um, WhatsApp app, I don't know if that's, it, Kim, is that live? Is WhatsApp app live? Um, you, could, you could do video chats on WhatsApp. Um, I, don't, I don't know if people are using that for a kaleidoscope. Yeah. Um, People are sending like messages and pictures and like video clips to okay, but not necessarily like live. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure what others are doing. Um, what are y'all using to offer non-live KPLs? Um, just as Kim was just talking about um the WhatsApp, the WhatsApp. <laughs> Is there any other apps or um platforms that y'all are using that are non-live? Uh, this is Su Wu in Bellingham. Um, so I have a variety of different programs that I offer to my KPLs, but it's not just my KPL kids that I'm accessing. And I'm doing some pre-filmed activity demonstrations and then posting them on my Facebook site. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Yeah, Melissa is raising her hand. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, Melissa. All right. So I'm Melissa from um, Bremerton area, and we have been recording videos on um, YouTube and then uploading them to our different Facebook platforms. Awesome. How's, how's that been going? Good. Good. I think it's been working, been working well. This week we're connecting it to the Week of the Young Child. So today is Tasty Tuesday. Um, yesterday was Music Mon's Monday. Friday is Family Friday. So that's when we're going to release the story time um, so oh, that we can awesome. have families. Yeah. I love that you're doing that. Thanks. We have a good team. Kimberly Holt, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. I was just going to say that I think what people are doing when they don't want to go live is pre-recording on their iPhones and then uploading to Facebook or downloading software that allows you to edit or manipulate your um, videos and then upload that to whatever it might be. Oh, wow. 
Thank you. I feel like we're all going to be professionals at technology when this is all over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we have a few here. We have WhatsApp, um, WeChat, YouTube. I'm not familiar with WhatsApp or WeChat. Um, I don't know if any of you all are using um, either of those. Um, if you are, I'd love to hear about it. Um, I thought Sucheta was using WhatsApp. Um, I thought she mentioned that before. Um, anyone else? Yeah, she put on the chat box that she uses WhatsApp video. Yeah, it seems to work really well um, for her and her participants. Um, another thing to kind of think about is um, consider separating your personal accounts from your work. Um, if you have a personal Facebook account, um, I would, we would suggest um, making a separate one for your KPL groups or um, even making a page off of your organization's um, Facebook. Um, just to kind of keep your, you know, keep that separate. I think it's, um, I think it's really helpful, especially if you're um, getting notifications and whatnot, um, just to kind of keep those things separate. Well, Suchetta has her hand raised, but I'm not sure if she can speak. Suchetta, would you? Was there something you wanted to say? I don't know. Let me make sure I have her um, allowed to speak because I know she just. Oh, there we go. Yes. Oh, I I was. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I was just going to say that we use WhatsApp uh, video chat for our teachers meeting, and then um, we are using Zoom with our kids, and I have as many as twenty participants and there is demand for more. I've just stopped and not included more than 22 right now. Mm -hmm. Because of 22 and three teachers and it becomes, it's becoming overwhelming when we sing and stuff. So if anybody else is using other type, and I have made two groups. So three and four year old, uh, uh, we are doing it at a different time. And five and six year old, we are doing it at a different time. And then the toddler group is completely different. Um, so if anybody else is using to accommodate more than 30 kids, please let me know. I know Zoom can, but it becomes too overwhelming. So that's why I divided them into mm -hmm. groups. And I have equal number of kids and participants in two groups. And it's becoming too overwhelming and preparing and then showing a lesson uh, and singing. And it's, 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 just, uh, it's just becoming a lot right now. Uh, to prepare for all of this. Uh, I, it takes me at least three days to like prepare a lesson and to show how I'm going to show the lesson because I, I'm not able to show it on the table and then hold my computer or uh, you know laptop. Mm -hmm. like that. And I've heard that people have been using an iPad and they've been writing on it. And so I don't, if anybody's used it, can you please share? If anybody's used iPad and then how to write on it and stuff. Thank you. Is anyone using iPads or anything similar to get that information out that Suchetta was just speaking of? I know that some people where I work have been using their iPads and for Zoom meetings just with us as teachers and they don't have as much functionality with the iPad as they do with the actual laptop or a, a main frame computer but maybe that doesn't matter for what you're talking about do you feel like it's more of like a mobile version versus like a computer like a desktop version of something i i have a laptop version and then uh, if i want to show them a lesson then mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming hard so i have to turn my laptop and like uh, take a painter's tape and show it on the wall literally um, or like put a laptop on the table and turn the laptop screen down to be able for children to see. And even then some of the children are not able to see properly. So I don't know if there is any proper way of doing it. If we can think of any ideas, Suchata, we'll certainly let you know. Thanks. Um, Kim, do you have any ideas for Suchata? Or maybe it's just something we can kind of discuss? 
Not at this moment. I'm, I'm going to think about it more, though. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and also, what are you all communicating to participants um, at this time that when you are doing your virtual KPL groups? <clears throat> Say that again. What are you communicating to participants? Oh, what are you um, communicating to participants? Initially, we just communicated about COVID-19 and how we are there for them, and uh, how to wash hands, keep safe, social distancing and everything. Now we are done with that and they, they are hearing so much about it from TV and other resources. So we just want to make it really normal. So I'm just doing my monthly theme normal lessons. Um, and on and off, I ask if they need anything, please do let me know uh, if they need any resources or anything like that because at IWW website we have uh, a lot of uh, resources that we already have put it up there if they need any um, uh, if they need any immigration status or, or a lawyer appointment by phone or if they need any health um, uh, reasons uh, need to go to the doctor or need to talk to somebody even with mental and emotional states uh, you know we have um, a person from in India Association of Western Washington, if they are feeling emotional and overwhelmed, to talk with them about it. So we have all those resources that we can bring. But uh, other than uh, making them feel normal, yeah, and I think that's I, important too. In the summer, this might be even that we might have to go throughout the summer also. Uh, we are just telling them, and that's why we started with Zoom. Yeah, thank you, Suchata. Um, anyone else um, want to chime in and let us know what you're communicating to participants right now? Hi, this is Helen. Um, so on our main website, we have translated resources and um, telephone number if people have inquiries in regards to um, uh, rent access, uh, unemployment, so a lot of the kind of instrumental needs. Uh, we also have an early years learning Facebook group where we are posting our plan learn sessions, but also caregiver resources and videos on how to engage with um, your children during this time, how to talk about COVID-19, and also to share stories and songs and activities and exercises. That's wonderful. Thank you, Helen. Yes. Anyone else? Um, this is Sue Wu up in Whatcom County. Um, so my groups are mainly focused on the children. Our website, like um, Helen's, um, is specifically focused in our on families and resources, but we're a developmental center mainly. And then we also provide KPLs um, to make it a more inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. um, so the children who receive services are getting face-to-face -face Zooms with their coaches. And then I provide a quote unquote classroom experience, which is kind of funny under Zoom. Um, <laughs> so, I break my class down to about 15 to 20 minutes and I introduce myself each time and then I sing a hello song each time. I sing three to four songs. I read a book and then I demonstrate an activity that you could do with a variety of different kinds of materials that the family could find in their home. And um, I do the activity. So for instance, today I had an under the bed box and I was washing dishes just kind of talking about routines based. I try to be um, empathetic for the families and the main bottom line is we're in this together and I support you and here's a little entertainment. Thank you, I think it's great that you're choosing activities, um, you know, with materials that, you know, they can find at home and just doing everyday things. I think that's really important um, right now and always really. Um, cause there's a ton of wonderful activities online, but, um, we really like when facilitators find those ones that are just, you know, ordinary things at home and things that families can find and don't have to buy. One of the challenges I think with finding things at home is at least in Whatcom County, where someone might live and what their home is like is mm -hmm. so diverse. 
that um, for me to try to imagine what what is something that everybody has? Yeah, I know. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it is it's definitely can be, it is challenging. I agree. But thank you. I appreciate your comment. You're welcome. So, Nicole, I have a question yeah. about um, how long. Uh, length of everyone's virtual groups or video recordings last? Yeah, anyone uh, want to chime in? How long you all are doing yours, um, your virtual groups for? And I think Kim is going to talk a little bit about that um, in a little bit as well. Um, just 45 minutes, uh, 45 to 50 minutes. So it was the first one. So um, we, we tried that. It might go a little longer next time, but um, that's all I could take it for 45 minutes. So. <laughs> because with 25 kids, it was very hard. Thank you, Sujata. Anyone else? Does Haley have a Sorry, go. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so we've been doing, um, there, we're actually not having families participate, like sign into a Zoom. It's Zoom that they're able to view live on Facebook. And ours are about 10 to 15 minutes. And it's been really nice because it's um, the hello, a song, a book, and then the goodbye song, and maybe another song. And we just kind of swap around between different things in the middle. But it's really consistent with the hello and goodbye song and about 10 to 15 minutes. That's great. Thank you. Um, I see some other participants raising their hands, but I can't see who they are. We have Melissa raising her hand. Go ahead, Melissa. Sorry, um, ours are just about 20 minutes, so they're pretty short. I'd like them to be a little shorter still, actually. Thank you. Um, I do see that Helen has raised her hand. Helen, go ahead. Sorry, that was uh, just by accident. Oh. <laughs> I was just testing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? has her hand raised, but I'm not sure if she wants to talk. Um, I was just wondering when you are doing them on Zoom and they're pre-recorded, do, do you set that up as a meeting with yourself and then record it? Or how exactly do you do that on Zoom is what I'm kind of wondering. Kim, do you know the answer to that question? I, I think you can just record it. Yeah, you can just set up a Zoom meeting, record it, and then Sure. Okay. I really have only worked with Zoom in this format, like with other people. I don't know how you right. do that by yourself, but there's okay. also a button at the bottom where you can um you can you can stream it live if you want to. Okay. Um yeah. Kim, do you have any input on that? Yeah, I, I think the free Zoom account is just access to the 30 minute meeting at max. And so I think you would just log in and then you would just push record, record yourself, and it'll say. So you wouldn't, you would just do what you normally do without inviting other people to join. Okay, so there's an option somewhere to record self on their yeah. login page. Okay. Yeah. Any other um, questions or comments before we move to the next slide? Brooke is raising her hand. Go ahead, Brooke. I was just going to ask, um, how long would you guys say that the kids are staying engaged virtually when you have facilitated the play and learn groups? I'm sorry, are you asking everyone how long they have stayed engaged on their end when they're doing Yeah. Virtual? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing my I'm first virtual. one tomorrow. And I'm just kind of wondering, I know some people mentioned like 10 to 15 and some 45. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, um, for those who have done a virtual group, um, what seems to be kind of like the, the max time that they're are participating? Yeah, that's a really great, que great question. I, I, I know that it's definitely going to be different for, um, for, you know, everyone, but um, 
Yeah, if anyone can answer that question, that would be awesome. Kind of chiming in and letting Brooke know how long yours has been. I, I so here is um, Nicole. I'm, uh, this is Sucheta from IWW. And uh, I have planned 10, 10, 10 minutes different activities. So 10 minutes activities like, uh, you know, for example, Earth Day is coming up. So I've planned 10 minute activity talking about Earth and, um, you know, incorporating this COVID response thing in it, like how we've, we've been using less cars and less um, everything and like uh, trying to use uh, really homemade sanitizations and you know, uh, how this is the, the pollution level has dropped and so, so 10 minutes of that and then 10 minutes of how we would do it like a craft activity that we can I can share it and they don't need anything with this craft like you know how to make a cup out of a newspaper or any magazine paper uh, to put your seeds and soil in it and then how you can put that same uh, thing into the into the earth so that it, it is less polluted and you're not using plastic pots and pans to grow the seeds, uh, how we can do that. And then the next um, activity would be just like some three letter phonetic words or some phonics words. So I will alternate uh, between language and math once in a while. Um, so that to keep them engaged. Otherwise, if I talk on this one topic for more than like five minutes, or if I show something to them uh, more than five minutes, they start yawning and uh, they start fidgeting <laughs> and talk, start talking to their moms and stuff like that. I do mute them and then if they raise their hand and so we sing songs. So when we are singing, I sing one line and they repeat, there is a lagging time and stuff like that. So I break it up into songs in between uh, changing activities and stuff like that. So. I'm doing only language math part, craft activity, another teacher does it, and then she mutes me, and then she takes over, and then another teacher does something else. Um, we also uh, try them because of uh, how we can use these natural dyes and stuff like that. So we are just using about 30 to 35 to 40 minutes, and if they talk more, then it becomes 45, but after that, we just sing our goodbye song. Uh, we start with hello song and goodbye song and then we say okay we'll meet you next time and if you do anything they post their pictures of their activity on whatsapp and their videos that we have given them lessons and that's how we've been doing it thank you such it sounds like you're doing a lot of things to keep them engaged yeah. i appreciate your comments um i saw another hand up zainab can you let me know who that is please yes it's connie Go Connie? Hi. Hi, Connie. Hi, Nicole. Um, this is Connie from CISE. Um, so um, I want to share what um, CISE is doing. So CISE mostly is um, uh, helping like Asian families. So um, most of them, uh, we have a Facebook group, as Helen said. And then uh, we also upload some of the, our videos on the YouTube and then send the link to our families using WeChat. Um, WeChat, most of the Asian families will using a WeChat. Um, this looks like WhatsApp is one of the software they communicate. So um, we, are, we, we have the plan to do it live, but there's the problem is because we, um, we are not only serve like Asian family, but also another different ethnic uh, families. And then um, most of the Asian family doesn't know um, about Facebook, doesn't know about Zoom, doesn't know what is uh, uh, Microsoft Team or kind of this software. Yeah. And um, some of the families um, is uh, grandparents. So for a caregiver, it's just hard for them to uh, figure it out, yeah. Well, how the Zoom working? So what happened is like we cannot do live. So we have to uh, he record uh, what we are doing on the circle time, and then we send the link um, to our another um, early learning program so that they can um, they can uh, just click the link and then they don't just look what we are doing. So the, this way is better so they can, because uh, most of our early learning program besides like KPL, they have to do like video chatting to check in to see how they're doing, 
what did they need so they, we can also get the feedback from the families like what they want for the kpl because uh, mm -hmm. uh we have a lot of concern is because uh, a lot of families i say that oh um, we try to limit the screen time because you know when you do zoom when you're doing mm -hmm. a lot of things that is the screen time so they, right. they try to limit it that so that we are trying to get out we are not going to do live we are going to do um just send out the link so that yeah. um the parents have been more con control like okay this time we are going to uh play this video instead of like okay uh if you do live and then they will just sit there and look at it and then after the live and then they may click something else <laughs> to look yeah. at it yeah so um this is what uh, we are doing right now so uh we are trying to do live too but uh, it's hard because some people know you know some people know how to use facebook but then some don't and then most of asian yeah. really don't know it's very hard so we try to figure it out now we're still like planning but we're trying to figure it out like how is that work yeah yeah thank you connie lots of good information thank you Zainab, is there any hands that have been raised that I didn't catch? Yes, we have Suzanne. Go ahead, Suzanne. Hi, I just wanted to go back to that question about how long. Um, I think, um, as other people have suggested, it really depends on the age group of your child. I, I work with toddlers, so I, I what's helped me think about it, because I don't really know, um, is guessing how long they might sit for a circle mm -hmm. and and then maybe add a little bit longer. So mine are pretty short, like some other people have said. And I thought, what if I start off shorter and if things go well, then next time I might make it a little longer and have a routine every time that I always do the same. Mm -hmm. I like that idea of starting off just, you know, short, and then going a little bit longer if you feel like you want to extend it. Um, I like that idea. That's a great idea. Anyone else? Zainab? No, that, that's all. All right. We're going to move into some, um, some tips for facilitating virtual KPL groups. Um, just to listen to your participants and find out what they want. Um, they might want time to talk and connect freely with no structure. Um, they might only want a live story time. Um, they might want facilitated activities that are done together. Um, maybe a schedule, like when your group met in person, like every Tuesday at this time. Um, and so, just thinking about those things and finding out exactly what they want and just kind of structuring your group around that. Um, also establish boundaries and discuss etiquette. etiquette. Um, if you're facilitating online live, um, asking participants if they can mute themselves during story times so everyone can hear. Um, will you be monitoring a chat box? Or you could even let them know that Maybe you're not going to be doing the chat box if you're in Zoom. Um, thinking about if you want them to raise their hand when they want to contribute. Um, how do people feel about recordings and screenshots, pictures? So if you're on Zoom, um, you can actually take a picture while you're on Zoom. And so to kind of talk through those things as well. Um, uh, yeah, and see if they're OK with that. Um, also, if there's a recording taken and someone's on video, if they're okay with that recording being sent out to other participants that show you on video or show them on video. Um, so really just thinking about all these things. I know that on Zoom, um, you can change your background. So if they, if they do want to be seen, but they don't want, you know, like their home to be seen, um, there's ways that you can insert a background so that you can only see them and not, you know, what's behind them, not their house and their space. Um, also, in thinking about emergent curriculum um, during this time, uh, reminding them about emergent curriculum and also reminding yourself of it, that if, you know, children are standing up while you're reading a story, that just to be flexible and okay with that. Um, to kind of using those same 
ideas of a KPL group in person, but virtually. And just being flexible if you, you know, create a plan and a curriculum for your online a virtual, you know, day. Um, that if nothing goes to plan, just being flexible with it and just going with the flow. Um, also, just like making it simple. Um, many people are overwhelmed with the amount of info that they're receiving related to news and resources. And that's on top of just dealing with changes in their daily lives. So navigating an online platform, especially with a child, can definitely be challenging. So um, keeping story time and group activities that are not too complicated. Um, consider sharing a resource or an idea each time, but just not overwhelming them too much. Um, anyone have any questions about those or want to want to um, contribute a comment? Yeah, we had a question. Um, how do you define emergent curriculum? Emergent curriculum is Coming up, let me actually read, I'll read you the definition of it <clears throat> right now. So, emerging curriculum is really a philosophy of teaching and planning curriculum that focuses on being responsive to children's interests, um, to create meaningful learning experiences. So really to tailor their learning to them, their interests, um, especially um, flexibility really plays a big part um, you know, allowing the child to lead. And so kind of um, passing that information on to caregivers, even through virtual, is super important, especially since um, everyone's at home right now and just kind of reminding them of that. Um, I saw that someone raised their hand. Um, Kimberly, you can go ahead and speak. Okay. So it's kind of like you said, following um, the lead of the children. If it turns out they all really responded super well to a dinosaur book and maybe going in the direction of dinosaurs mm -hmm. or something opposed to following a rigid curriculum that no one is really, that kids aren't responding to. Is that right? Cool? Yeah. Like if okay. like yeah. you decide to do a topic and um, no one is interested in it and you just continue, it's like, it's it's great that you came up with a wonderful topic, but it's it's best to come up with a topic that you know children and caregivers are interested in and that are excited to learn about, um, because that's where the connections really are. So yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments before I move on to the next slide? Okay. Um, some more tips, uh, making a welcome KPL sign. So just making a fun sign that says welcome to KPL and holding it up as um, you greet people as they come into the virtual room um, or if you're doing it live, um, changing your background to something fun and child friendly. Maybe put a kaleidoscope play and learn um, logo in the background or there are so many now out there. Um, some really, really fun ones, especially now, many, many more now that um, you can choose from. Um, writing down a schedule and showing it to them. Um, I know that a participant mentioned just not being able to share the curriculum, but just maybe writing it on a paper and holding it up to the camera and showing them what it, you know, what the schedule is going to be for the day. Um, wearing a funny hat, um, a fun shirt or a colorful wig. Um, that's something that I just did in a meeting recently. <laughs> Um, at one of our meetings because it's just fun. Um, and so the kids can um, differentiate who is the facilitator amongst the other people. Um, using KPL highlights. So we've been talking about, um, I don't know if you all have read the newsletter, but each month is something different. We like to highlight um, this month is motor skills. So just kind of talking about um, those sort of things, giving them some tips. Um, things that they can do at home um, or online together. Um, let's see. <clears throat> More tips, um, playing music as people sign in and log off. Um, this is something that Kim and I have kind of played with a little bit that we're still sort of learning about. But um, there is a source that I will send to you all in your follow-up email. I think it's called Ben Sound. 
and it is um, free copyright music. So it's mostly instrumental music, but it's really nice. And there's a lot of different types of um, playlists in there that you can play. And so I think it's really fun to just play music as people come in and come out. Um, choosing the best screen view. So if you're on Zoom, um, you can view a few people at a time, or you can view everyone that's in the room at one time. Um, I really like doing that because I love seeing everyone's faces. Um, uh, consider sharing with your participants um, videos and clips of stories being read. Um, listen and watch them together. And remember copyrights. Um, you know, just keep that in mind, especially if you're doing Facebook Live or if you're doing something on YouTube. A video will not stay up long on YouTube. I have done it many, many times. And it will be taken off pretty quickly if there's music in the background that is not copyright free. I'm not sure how they flag this, um, but I've done many slideshows for people and had music and it was immediately taken down. So just to kind of keep that in mind. I'm not sure even how that works on Facebook Live, but just to kind of um, just keep that in mind. Um, encourage participants to move like you would in a person in an in-person KPL. Um, have them stand up, stretch, dance, wiggle their fingers, um, let little ones stand up and move and walk around, um, leaving the device, uh, and just thinking and remembering that it's not always developmentally appropriate to expect them to sit the whole time. Um, just like in an in-person KPL, um, you know, bod children's bodies need to move. Um, that's how they're most comfortable, just moving around. So just being flexible and being okay with that. Um, as a facilitator, use what you have at home and make it fun. Um, use props that you have or make your own. If you don't have any, you can use cardboard cutouts, um, make sock puppets, outdoor items like leaves, flowers, pine cones, rocks, etc. cetera. Um, many, many ideas. Um, if any of y'all have any more ideas, please feel free to um, chime in or, um, or even save it for the discussion for later as well. Um, Kim, do you want to add anything to that? Um, there's another slide um, with a couple more ideas. Okay. I, I don't think I have anything to add. Thank you. Yeah. And the next one is just um, showing them what they can do at home to play and promote child development. Ask them to bring something to the screen. I really, really love this idea. I think someone mentioned this before and Kim has been talking about it too. Um, like an empty box, cup, et cetera, needed to do the activity. Um, some other examples are something to drum on while doing an online drum circle, laundry to show how you can sort by color, shape, size. Um, I just think it's so fun to um, think of a child walking around their home, trying to find one thing that they can bring to their virtual KPL group and being able to share that one thing, I think is just super special. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, keeping the normalcy. Um, do you usually sing a certain song or have everyone say their names? Just continuing to do that. And um, Suchetha talked about that earlier, just keeping the normalcy as much as possible. Um, it definitely makes people feel comforted and um, and if you're doing those types of things, it will remember that, it will remind them of the in-person KPL and, um, you know, hopefully make them feel joyful and just making it fun. Um, Kim? Thank you, Nicole. That was a lot yeah. of information. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't think I'll spend a lot of time on this slide because for the most part, we've talked about it already. Um, non-live versions of KPL that you all talked about, like uploading videos, like on YouTube or Facebook pages and WeChat and WhatsApp and whatnot. But just the one thing I will just bring up one more time um, for everyone's health and like work-life balance is that if you're using a personal device to do your KPL work, like if you're sharing something on WhatsApp or you're posting something on YouTube and then your phone's giving you notifications on like comments caregivers are giving or questions they have, just remember to set parameters for yourself. Like maybe you only want to respond to those Monday through Friday and you can let your participants know that you'll be doing that Monday through Friday up until like five o'clock or something. 
or to adjust your settings so that you only get notifications like on the weekdays, not the weekends. So just remember to keep that in mind because we want you to, again, have a good work-life balance and the personal space when you need it and a break from KPL when you're not um, on the clock. So please, please um, do think about that. Um, the next slide um, touches up on a topic that you all brought up already in the beginning, and it's how long should a live KPL be? Um, so generally speaking, it's just really flexible. Um, please remember emergent curriculum and adapting to the needs of your participants. Um, gauge their interest and attention span. Um, in reality, a virtual KPL on the screen is going to feel so much different than a live KPL. So people's attention spans may be different, and it's totally okay to end early if you need to. Um, typically speaking, we all know that it's a, an essential activity that a group meets for 90 minutes, and we understand that this is a very unusual time and that this transition from in-person to virtual KPL is very new and 90 minutes is not going to necessarily fit a virtual setting, and it's not really developmentally appropriate either. And we totally understand that. Um, you may also be limited by whatever platform you're using. So for example, the Zoom accounts that are free only allow up to 30 minutes. Um, so we're all very flexible during this time, so no worries if your group is not meeting 90 minutes. That's probably way too long. It is way too long, honestly, for a virtual group. Um, but for the higher end of the age range of birth to five, the World Health Organization and the American Academy of Pediatrics does not recommend more than 60 minutes of screen time daily. So that is something to keep in mind while you are leading your virtual groups is that for, you know, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds in that age range, um, it is not recommended that they get more than 60 minutes of screen time a day. So kind of keep that in the back of your head while you're leading your groups. Um, generally speaking, like on behalf of the KPL team, we, um, we're gonna follow that guideline and recommend that you don't go more than 60 minutes with the kiddos and caregivers. And honestly, an hour may be way too much. Um, some folks said that there was 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 45. That is totally fine. Um, in the end, I think if you kind of add up all the chunks of time your virtual group um, takes like the beginning login time, um, time to say goodbye, greetings, maybe a short story, a few songs, and maybe some time um, for the caregivers and kiddos to talk. It may be up to an hour and that's totally fine. I think it's really going to be dependent on the size of your group and their attention span and the ages of the kids in that virtual group. Does anyone have any more questions about this? No? Okay. So if you do, um, feel free to put it in the Q&A and we will answer them. So we've been talking a lot about screen time. And if you go to the next slide, we want to take a moment to see if any of you have talked about screen time specifically with your participants as it relates to like screen time in children and child development and how much is healthy for them, how much is not healthy for them. We have only talked about it as a staff and we're not really sure what to do about this new screen time world given the recommendations for kids under two. Yeah, okay, thank you, then that's okay. I think this is, um, more at the top of people's minds in general, whether that be just among staff or talking with caregivers and children about it. Um, and that's totally okay. We just kind of wanted to gauge to see who has been talking about it already. Connie's raising her hand. Go ahead, Connie. Hi, it's Connie again from CISD. So as a parent, I think it's hard to talk about screen time with the kids. Because I try to talk to my kids, tell them that, oh, you guys cannot um, hold in your cabinet or whatever rectangle thingy is it's not good for your eyes. But then the kids will like tell me about, mom, you are on your computer all day too. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, how yeah. can I explain it to them? I was like, you know, I'm working. I was like, 
oh, hello, you're working, but you know, you're still on the screen, John. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a great point. I think it's important to be a role model and to, if you can, also take breaks and so that they know that they should take breaks as well if they're in front of the TV or a screen. Um, I think the main difference is you can explain to them that their brains are smaller than yours because they're still so little and they're still growing and developing. So your screen time is going to be different than their screen time. Um, you could try explaining that to your little ones. I'm not sure if they'll like that answer. <laughs> But um, that is the reality of the difference between a screen time with an adult versus a young one who still has a developing brain. Helen is Go ahead, Helen. Go ahead, Helen. Thanks. Um, just to expand on what Connie was saying, too, is that we're getting some feedback from our um, grandmas and grandparents about how to create boundaries around screen time. So we're really kind of following their lead and, and thinking, okay, well, what can we do that's different, you know, mm -hmm. um, so really providing opportunities for them to tips on how to schedule their time, yeah. uh, things that they can yeah. do, like enhancement or enrichment activities, tips and resources around like how to use household items to do different kinds of activities. So the screen time is limited. Um, right now we're looking at eight to 10 minutes and they can repeat the videos, but then to provide other kinds of enrichment activities for them to do around the circle time theme and therefore it, it really sort of gives them a little bit of structure that they might need to move away from that screen. That's perfect, um, Helen. Thank you for sharing that. And we'll expand on more on what you just said too in the next few minutes. Can we turn to the next slide, Nicole? Okay, so the reason why you bring this up is because, um, you know, interaction is really important in brain development Earth to five, quality in person interactions. And the reality is now that this program is now being transferred to virtual because of the situation. And so there's so many questions about, is this healthy? What's dilemma appropriate? And what we should be communicating to caregivers. Um, so we, we just want to spend so more time talking about this and in short, um, the screen time during a virtual KPL can be a healthy quality time. It's just about moderation and making that session interactive, full of bonding and learning and just a quality experience in general. Um, a weekly short KPL session on Zoom, for example, that's interactive is gonna be very different an experience than with a child watching a TV show all afternoon by themselves, right? So it's really just about the intention during your session and making it a very dynamic experience for them. Um, and so we have a short video on screen use and child development that Nicole's gonna play for you. It's about a couple minutes long. 98% of American homes with children now have an electronic mobile device. And on average, kids eight and under spend more than two hours a day looking at a screen. Is that too much? Or could there actually be developmental benefits to screen time? This is Your Brain On, where we explore how the world affects our brains and ourselves. Young brains need a lot of external stimuli to develop, particularly from birth to age three, what's known as the critical period. It's during this time that children's neurons are making connections for fundamental skills such as vision, hearing, and language. But these needs are based on centuries of human evolution, which used to have nothing to do with screens. Consider a child watching a video instead of listening to parents read a book. It's a far different experience for the brain. Rather than kids learning to focus and imagine the story, the device presents everything to them, so certain cognitive systems become underdeveloped. And when children spend too much time in front of a screen rather than interacting with people, they can have stunted development of the frontal lobe, part of the brain that decodes social interactions. It can become more difficult to develop empathy or learn social cues like facial expressions. What's more, the stimuli from a screen can be a lot. Colors, sounds, stories, all at a super fast pace. That can be sensory overload, releasing stress hormones such as cortisol. It can also overactivate the brain's reward systems, like the addictive hormone dopamine, getting kids used to immediate gratification they wouldn't get in the real world. So most scientists and doctors agree that screen time can alter young, still-forming brains. But in some ways, that change can be positive. Take the results of one recent study that exposed young mice six hours daily to audiovisual stimuli similar to those found in a video game. After 10 days, the mice showed signs of hyperactivity, impaired learning, and risk-taking. 
But the mice also stayed calm in an environment that usually would have stressed them out. Some scientists now argue screen time can help prepare a child's brain for our increasingly fast-paced, high-stimulus world. So, screen time isn't always bad, and it isn't all created equal either. An educational letter-matching game isn't the same as a violent movie. As with many things, the key is moderation. Limiting daily screen time and making sure the child can function in all of modern life. Not only with screens, but in the real world too. Okay, so um, just to add on to that, we just wanted to remind A &B. that there are tools out there on like phones, TVs, tablets, and so on to manage and monitor content quality and quantity of your the children's um, like use of that device. So you could make sure that they only are consuming like age appropriate TV shows or limiting their time and how much they can watch. watch. So there are tools like that, and that's something also to remind caregivers as well if they're having trouble managing and monitoring their children's uh, screen use. And uh, Nicole's going to go quickly um, a bit more deeply about the recommendations to um, be more clear about at what age is how much screen time appropriate. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, we have some resources for you all, and um, this is the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations and I'm going to go ahead and go over um, what they recommend um, for what age group and so um, let me switch to the next slide um, it says for the World Health Organization recommends per day um, infants less than one year um, screen time is or I'm sorry uh, engaging in reading and storytelling with a caregiver is encouraged but should not be um, longer than one hour, um, and that's per day. Um, let's see, the next one is children one to two age, um, two years of age. Um, and for this one, it is also um, no more than one hour, but less is better, definitely. Um, the next one is three to four years of age. Um, and she also says um, no more than one hour and less is better. So it's pretty much, um, it sounds like 60 minutes, um, but less is obviously better. So um, they do recommend it's, um, they can watch up to an hour, but, um, but you know, less screen time is always best. And then um, I also wanna add that the American Academy of Pediatrics has a slightly modified uh, or different recommendation than the World Health Organization. And they say that in under 18 months to avoid screen time, except for video chatting, which is a different experience. And as long as video chatting is done well and made into a bonding and like quality experience, um, the research is showing that, is that it's okay. Um, just an FYI. And video chatting is essentially in some ways very similar to what like the KPLs on Zoom are. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. And I think the next slide is mine. Um, so just to recap on how to make screen time during virtual KPL quality, um, we have some tips for you to keep in mind as you lead your virtual KPLs. Uh, make sure that it is an experience that you're fostering that promotes child and caregivers to interact with another while on the Zoom, just like you would in an in-person KPL. Um, try to ask us the questions and promote conversation among the participants and in the group. Um, not just between you and participants, but among the participants themselves as well. Try to have, um, again, just like in a normal KPL, singing and group games and so on so that they can interact virtually. And also keep it, you know, um, concise, short, and development appropriate, as we've been saying. And also, just like Helen was expanding on, supplement it with ideas for what children and caregivers can do in home, at home, in person, to promote fun, bonding, and healthy development without a screen. So I think virtual KPL is just a part of it, but then also encouraging them to do really quality time face-to-face -face without technology at home after the KPL is also really important as well. And um, I just wanted to kind of end this kind of screen time session on just reminding everyone that we live in 2020 and it's a very um, 
digital world that we live in. And while we need to keep in mind that we have to continue to support really quality interactions with children and caregivers and the world around them that are in person, it's also really great that we can connect with one another and using technology and screens, but we have to find a balance. So really try to encourage caregivers to not let technology impede on their child's development, but use it as a tool to promote it and really finding a way to have moderation and balance these quality in-person interactions while at the same time using technology as a tool um, to make people's lives healthy and connected, basically. So the next section was actually a follow-up on Breck's question about social distancing impacts on infants and toddlers and social emotional health. But because we're running short on time, I think we're gonna skip this section if that's okay and come back to it next week so that we are not so rushed and we have time to talk about it and discuss it. So we're actually gonna skip over the next few slides, but we'll come back to it next time, I promise you. And if you all have any questions um, right now about all the screen use and virtual KPL um, stuff that's going on, um, we can talk about it now before Nicole goes into resources for this week. Kimberly Holt is raising her hand. Go ahead, Kimberly. Okay, so just to recap, you were saying that um, the World Health Organization doesn't recommends only 60 minutes of screen time per day, ages three and under. And uh, two and up, two and up. Two and up. Mm -hmm. So for two and up, they recommend no more than 60 minutes of screen time. Correct, yes. And then they don't recommend anything at all for under two. Okay, and that's the World Health Organization? Yes. Okay. The original source is linked in this PowerPoint, and it's the American Academy of Pediatrics that says under 18 months, no- Only video chatting. Video chatting is okay anything. because it's like a conversation. So it's yeah, like, it's interactive and you're saying their name yeah. and you're mm -hmm. hoping for a response or it's yeah. anticipated that they yeah. would do something. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Helen is also raising her hand. Go ahead, Helen. Helen? Sorry, I guess again, that was by accident. I don't know how that oh, happened. <laughs> it's okay, no worries. Okay, thanks. Is there anyone else, Saina, raising hands or questions? No, that's it so far. Okay, um, then we can go to resources. Uh, Nicole, we have about five minutes. Okay. Um, we have some resources on screen time. Zero to three has some really great resources um, that are in here. Also, American Academy of Pediatrics is also linked in here. So when this is sent out, um, you'll be able to just click on those links and they'll take you straight to their sites. Um, also, we have um, resources um, that are sent out in the follow-up email every week, um, online resources, as well as activity resources, and COVID-19 updates um, and resources on different topics. Um, I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly. And so, um, so, we, um, so we're being mindful of all your time. So this is this week's activities. Um, I again wanted to think of things that can be done with items that families and caregivers have in their household already. Um, you'll also receive a, a copy of this in your follow-up email along with any attachments. And we'll move on to the first activity, which is just tummy time. Um, zero to three says 30 is a good number when thinking about how long babies should be doing tummy time each day. That doesn't mean 30 minutes all at once, but can be done a few minutes throughout the day. So I just wanted to add that in there. Um, also, the next one is imaginative box play, um, finding grocery boxes or empty food containers, um, either sealing them up or leaving them open so things can be placed inside. Um, it's a really great play. Um, children all ages can do this, can play with these items. I've also 
linked in some examples of things that can be found in a kitchen or a house. Um, uh, for a small child, they might um, play with it differently than an older child. Um, an older child might want to create blocks or um, have, you know, just different ideas. They might even be interested in what happens to the boxes after they're done being played with. So, which can definitely go into a conversation about recycling. Um, I found a really neat video on PBS on recycling. So, I'm happy to also send that over to you all in a follow-up email. Um, and so, these, let me see if I, oh, I did it. We'll start with um, tummy time. So, Kim uh, had mentioned to me, she thought it would be really great to talk about different surfaces. Um, so, giving tummy time, um, on different surfaces, carpet, um, linoleum, wood, just feels very different to babies, just as it does for us when we're sitting or we're walking on it. So um, some fun ideas that I'll also send you. Um, and also more tummy time ideas on just, you know, caregivers and families laying down with their babies, having tummy time on their chest and just connecting with them in that way. Um, Sensory play, um, putting babies in um, boxes of beans and water. Um, stay tuned, we might talk more about these types of activities um, during our next webinar. Um, some examples of things in the kitchen that I will also send out is um, dry food boxes, what kinds of things um, caregivers can look for in their kitchen. Um, the weekly activities book is Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Um, you'll also be able to click that link when I send a follow-up email to watch the video or the story being read. Um, open share, we wanna open up this time for you all to, um, we don't have too much time, but we'd love for you all to have opportunities to talk amongst one another um, about just ideas, um, what are you hearing? Um, are the needs of families and participants and ways to support families and participants? Um, and Nicole, we may actually, I'm thinking, because we only have a minute left, uh, maybe because oh. folks, folks are able to talk um, a lot in the beginning, we might skip this if people feel okay. 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 Great discussion in the beginning. Okay. Is that okay with people? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Yeah, please, um, please. Uh, can we, uh, can you send that, uh, uh, when you send the slide, how do I send the picture of that tummy time surface uh, and the, oh. the, the story thing to, to my parents? How do I send that, just that resource instead of the whole web webinar? Um, I can send it to you um, in an email, Sujata. Um, okay. so that you have, um, you're able to send it over to them. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, if you all see the poll on your screen, if you can just take it for us right now, that would be great. Um, there are three choices, um, how children respond to crisis, how it impacts development and what adults can do, how children learn through play at home and an entire webinar and activity ideas. Um, please let me know if you don't see that. Um, everyone should see it. Let me, yep, everyone should see it now. I just launched it. So if you could all just um, uh, make a choice, that would be awesome. And if you're um, joining on phone or can't see the poll on your device, you can just let us know like in email or something like that. That's okay. Yes, please. What are you, what are you supposed to put it on? Like when do you, when you say poll? There's a poll and you should be able to, um, there's a question and you should be able to, um, to click what you would like to, um, the, the webinar to be on next week. If you can see it, Sucheta, you can just email us and we'll add your answer in. So next time, what, what I would like to do? Right, there's three answers. So you can either answer those or you can let us know and then we can put it in for you. Oh, I see. How do I write it? I don't know. And uh, at last, <laughs> I love this meme that Kim, Kim found. <laughs> um, hey, you wash your hands. It won't take long. It only takes 20 seconds. And just a friendly reminder. 
Um, oop. If you are a BSK recipient, um, grantee, we would love for you to stay on. So um, we have some important information on reporting. If you are not, um, if you and you've completed the poll, you're welcome to um, to exit. And please feel free to email us if you just have any burning questions that we weren't able to answer, or if you think of anything um, after you've already logged off. And we really, really appreciate you all. So thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you. Jessamine, are you are you on the webinar right now? Who? Let me Jessamine see. From King County Best Starts for Kids. Let me. See. Yep, she's here. I just haven't clicked her in yet. Okay, cool. Now she should be able to. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much. Right. This is yeah, sorry, you went a few minutes over. Sorry about that. No, it's not a problem. I think this is going to be very quick. It's just some brief information. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessamine Finlay, and I'm uh, from Best Arts for Kids, um, one of the newer team members. Um, I look forward to working with you all in the near future. Um, and I just wanted to put a plug in for our new um, online reporting system. It's called Zoom Grants. Um, I recognize that not everybody on this call probably does the reporting for your project. So, but I just wanted to spread the information around and maybe you can talk to your team members about what you hear um, today. And so Zoom Grants is a online reporting system that's gonna hopefully uh, minimize the amount of back and forth you have to do with us at BSK. And it'll be, once we're in it, it'll be very clear. It's gonna keep track of our records. Um, you'll be able to see your records very clearly, what you've submitted in the past, the invoices. Um, everything in one place. Um, can we go to the next slide? Um, so what we'll be using it for, as I said, uh, your invoices, your quarterly program reports, and your quarterly financial reports all in one place instead of kind of having to track it in your email, um, which hopefully will, will have ease of use going forward. Can you go to the next one? Um, so what this means for you all is for each project, an application, what's called an application needs to be set up in Zoom Grants along with a Zoom Grants account um, and add any relevant collaborators that may be working on it. Again, some of your uh, supervisors or if there's administrative people may have already uh, done this for your project, um, but I do know from the ones that we have received, we've only received the application from about half of the uh, KPL uh, programs. So I really need to uh, encourage you to uh, encourage your colleagues or yourselves um, to get those applications in so we can have um, active accounts in Zoom grants. Uh, they were due back in March. So this is just a, an additional reminder. Um, and I've been reaching out to programs one-on-one, -on -one, but just wanted to take the opportunity to uh, to get you all on here as well. Um, so it requires setting up an account, like I said, adding collaborators, and then it's just taking the information from your current contract and putting it into the account. Unfortunately, we can't do it on the um, county side. It needs, or in the public health side, it needs to be done by the, the, the project. So um, otherwise I would love to, to do this. It's, it's, unfortunately a little bit of busy work, but once it's in, you only have to do it once and then we should be all set. So you can just go to this link here, the zoomgrants.com slash CGF slash KPL, and, um, and that would get you started. Um, and if we can go to the next slide very quickly. Um, and if you have any questions, or if you're unsure if your program has submitted theirs, or if you wanna give me an update on who I should reach out to, that would be super helpful for me just to move this forward and, and cross this off the list, that would be great. You can reach me at jfinlay at kingcounty.gov. Um, and I really look forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Jessamine. Thank you. Um, do folks have any questions they wanna ask verbally, or if you want to put something like in the q and now you can do that now and we'll check it. <laughs> you have a few minutes left. Um, Jasmine, this is Sucheta from IWW. Has Lalita already done this for us or I have to tell her to do this? 
Um, you know, she, I, I have been working with Lolita and um, we, it's not quite completed. I'm, I'm waiting on something. So if you want a reminder that there's just, that sh there's probably an email from me in her email box, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, again, you can reach me by the email that's on the screen um, for any reason, but uh, in particular with Zoom grants, it would be great. Thank, thank you, Tiffany. And thank, thank you, everyone who has joined us today. And uh, we will see all of you, see you, hear all of you <laughs> um, next week at one o'clock on Tuesday for the next weekly webinar. Anything else to add, Nicole? Yeah, I wanted to, um, I, I don't think my answer went through to Brooke. Brooke, yes, we do have those yoga cards digitally and I'm happy to send you, um, send you copies. Oh, that will be great, Nicole. That will be very helpful. Thank you. Yep. Um, I think that's it, Kim. Just appreciate okay. everyone joining us and we're excited to, um, to see what everyone wants to learn about next week or to talk about. Sounds good. Bye all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.